one fifteen hundredth of a second determines its destiny. moisture, and darkness. These are the two basic requirements centipedes need in order to thrive. In such conditions, they are able to thrive from the tropics all the way to the Arctic and subarctic. They can even manage in deserts. Some creatures live off the darkness. Survival is not a matter of luck for those who use darkness as a weapon of choice. Among the small creatures of the night, they are the mighty ones. They are merciless carnivores who consume even the hairy and difficult to eat pine-eating caterpillar. For humans, they actually play a useful role by killing harmful bugs that would otherwise ruin the roots of crops. Their array of legs provide a tremendous advantage when they hunt. The legs can grab hold of moving prey and help to pin them down. Their bodies are shaped just right for moving through narrow crevices or around the soil. Tentacle-like antenna are employed to seek out food sources. As the antenna feel the way forward for this long creature, the 15 segments and the 30 legs follow up from behind. The antenna on the front of the head are vital to the centipede's survival. They are very sensitive, even capable of reading humidity and temperature. They also sense olfactory and tactile sensation. The antenna themselves are covered with cilia. All the sensory organs, the functional equivalent of their eyes, ears and nose, are found in one set of these tentacles. Their actual eyes, on the right and left side of the head, are rudimentary structures. These eyes are primitive compound eyes composed of photoreceptors called ocelli. For the most part, they are degenerated and don't provide much function. For the centipede, hunting is easy. They are equipped with a secret weapon. It is a powerful poison-tipped claw shaped like a fang. In a split second, it can paralyze their opponent. puts the centipede at considerable advantage in the fight for survival. The stronger centipedes can paralyze something even the size of a wild rat. This once formidable lizard is now defenseless and still, making it an easy victim. The poison-tipped teeth are actually modified forms of the first set of legs. The 
venom excreting gland connected to these sharp instruments contains pain-inducing histamine and serotonin. An attack from these appendages would cause swollen feet and pain in a human, but the much smaller lizard will die. The centipede again releases its venom. The lizard resists until the very end. It probably knows it's going to die, but its survival instinct won't let go. have made the centipede masters in the world of the centimeter tall creatures. Centipedes are the only animals known to have legs that evolved into poisonous fangs. In doing so, they have been able to succeed handily in the fight for survival. The centipede is indeed a poisonous insect, and we humans have categorized it as a noxious pest. Too often, this simplistic labeling is the limit to how much we try to understand other species. The centipede is not without its own weak points. Unlike some other arthropods, its exoskeleton does not form a waterproof barrier, which means it can dehydrate and also drown. Each segment of the centipede has breathing holes used for respiration. When they are wet, the centipede goes into a coma-like state. The breathing holes are always open like this. Every time the centipede takes in air, microscopic hairs filter out harmful things. Though they may not look like it, centipedes are quite clean creatures. There are some 3,000 kinds of centipede, including species that are more than 50 centimeters in length. Some of them have 177 pairs of legs. There are very few places on the surface of the earth where centipedes have not left their footprints. The legs of the centipede are as wondrous as the wings of a bird. The segmented body is naturally flexible, allowing the centipede to penetrate all kinds of terrain. The legs form a train going over an obstruction in unison. However difficult the geography, the centipede will smoothly navigate through it. How do centipedes manage not to stumble despite so many legs? The secret is that the hind legs are longer than the front legs, extending farther away from the body, so that the back legs don't step on the ones in front. that doesn't explain everything. How are these many legs able to move so fast? The secret here is that not all the legs are used at the same time. If one looks closely, it is possible to see that only some of the legs are touching the ground. Also, the centipede makes sure that one by one, all the legs touch the same point, ensuring an orderly procession. In times of urgency, only three legs may be touching the ground at once, allowing them to run.
Some have wings. Others have the ability to stay underwater. Some have the courage to look to the sky, boasting the ability to fly. The darkness brings life to the forest. It seemed odd that the vivacious centipede was staying so still. Actually, it was in fact eating. Trusting in its hard suit of armor for protection, the ground beetle has its eye on the centipede's food, but in the end, it slinks away hungry. It's a time when the lucky get to rest, but the hungry must begin their search for food. With the coming night, the warlike fight for survival has just begun. The hedgehog is a voracious hunter, devouring everything from small insects to reptiles. What creature is this, eagerly smelling the air with its long muzzle? It's a musk shrew. The musk shrew is virtually blind, but is nevertheless a ruthless hunter. Instead of using its eyes, it sniffs out its prey. The musk shrew and the centipede engage in a violent struggle. Even if one creature dominates by size, it might find itself on the losing end of this fight to the death. The toad senses food. It checks how far away the centipede is. One fifteen hundredth of a second determines its destiny. This poisonous creature with long legs resists with all its might. Swallowing the centipede requires a lot more effort than catching it. After the sun sets, every night is like this. The predator can also become the prey. This is our log of the life of a centipede.
When the weather grows chilly, the centipede prepares for a new body. Casting off its old covering is how this creature overcomes the limits in which it has been confined. Because of its long body, the molting process takes a considerable amount of time. Beginning with its head, it squirms its way out of the old covering. The entire ecdesis process is quite an effort, taking up a whole day. Each ecdesis is a step toward maturity, but if an enemy encounters the centipede during this vulnerable procedure, its life may be at an end. After casting off its old shell, the centipede experiences a new metabolic cycle. At this point, its outer covering is as soft and tender as the day it was born. Its body color is now lighter. It must dry itself and then wait in order to have a hard, chitin-based shell. The malting process takes up as much energy as birth. It's now time to rest. The centipede is regarded as an unpleasant creature with an unpleasant life. We think we know them, but we don't. <laughs> 